วัสดีค่ะ and welcome to Thailand today. I'm Chola Pansan Arula. Thank you very much for joining us. As the medical tourism business is booming globally, we'll see how Thailand has been tapping markets. Today, we're joined by Professor Zaydok Lempert, president of the Panorama Medica Group, who will give us more insights into this very interesting and growing industry. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ Professor, thank you very much for making time for us. Now the medical tourism industry seems to be big around the world, and the business is growing significantly as well. So, could you just tell us about the outlook? How is the industry doing on a global basis? Well, in principle, medical tourism has gone from being a niche into mainstream, and it means that everyone by now, the customers and the service providers, know that this kind of Servicing, providing, and people traveling for receiving treatment is there, and it has become a big industry with many million of people coming or going, and of course, a full economic niche is is built on this. Mm -hmm. What is actually fueling the growth? Why is it becoming a big business? Well. The, there is there is an equation to medical tourism how it started, and this. Was mainly because of costs. People saw that they can receive treatment much cheaper than in their home, or maybe in their homes they had no such services. And then, of course, it's it's a point of accessibility. How easy is it to travel to this point? And then, of course, above all, is the quality. So, if you can get good quality, easy to reach for a cheaper cost than at home, then you have an incentive. Mm -hmm. And Of course, there are there are more points to to the equation, but this is what moves people at the moment. They need treatments; they do not receive them easily or very long waiting times, mm -hmm. where they live and they solve the problems like this. I see. With the population aging fast, it's yes. growing. Will that be a factor driving the growth in the medical tourism service as well? Do you see that as an opportunity? Um, We need to differentiate because aging can be either you are retired and you're too old to travel, so we have no medical, to, but you are ready to move to relocate to a place which is easy and comfortable and nice to live to fin to finish the last period of your life. Uh, the other aging we can talk about is what we call anti-aging today or rejuvenation. Nobody wants to grow old. <laughs> and you, we cannot stop this one yet. Even though science is very advanced, but what we can do through the knowledge we are having today is rebalance the body functions to make you feel well and younger, even though you keep collecting the, the years, the age. Mm -hmm. And that has uh, has been popular rebalancing. It has been very popular, and this is one of the main growth points we are having at the moment: is hormonal balancing. Uh, Anti, well, well anti-aging is is hormonal balancing and um, new the the newest um, the newest method we are mechanism we are using now is stem cells. Stem cells. Yes, I see. Which mainly, if possible, belong to you. Your own stem cells are being reactivated, and they start circulating again in your body, finding places of weak health and. Starting repairing them or healing them, and the other, the other method, which is a little bit more complicated because it's more regulated, is using stem cells of somebody else, and this is when we use umbilical cords or bone marrow and so on, and this needs more, more, let's say, uh, auditing that that it's that it's used correctly mm -hmm. in a way. But it is, but it is used everywhere, and it has it is becoming very popular. I see. Now let's talk about some of the world top medical destinations. <coughs> yes. Where are these places? Well, geographically, the the world is divided between what we call west and east. We cannot do it. There is very little between north and south at the moment. So when we talk about West, which is uh, mainly the United States, uh, Canada, and so on, people who have problems there would go to South America. They will go to play. This is again the point of the equation: accessibility. Mm -hmm. It is very far for Americans to travel to Southeast Asia, for example. 
The East, of course, which is having a big concentration of treatment service providers, uh, is now uh, comprising of, of Thailand as number one, and then we are having, followed by Malaysia and Singapore, uh, a very hard and aggressive competition coming from India. Then, of course, we have Korea, which is famous for cosmetic and so on. Taiwan is having very good facilities. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, this region is more used by people from the Middle East, um, European sometimes, because European are in the middle. For them, it's almost the same distance whether they travel east or west. Around about 10 it. hours coming to That's Thailand, correct. for That's example. That's correct, yes. So we're seeing more of the Europeans. We see many people. Europeans. You must also know, you see, in Europe, the factor of waiting long is, is very strong. The Europeans do not lack on quality and most of the treatments in Europe would be covered by insurances. So it's because of the universal health care program they have makes the queue long? It is very long and people are not ready to wait for almost a year or one and a half years for surgery they need now. So, and, and in principle, what we, the, the strength that we are having here is that treatments can be immediate mm -hmm. by appointment. Uh, it is a matter of settling payments because at the end of the line everyone is looking at it commercially as well and uh, it is this these are agreements with the insurances to pay for these treatments um, the Americans had problems because until Obamacare they had no such thing and in the Middle East meaning let's say Gulf area and so on, they did not have facilities. And the interesting there is that um, most of the citizens who come from there are covered, their costs are covered by the government. And this is why we are having so many of them coming here. So the whole package is covered? All the expenses of, of Gulf citizens, especially if they are government workers like military or civil workers and so on, is covered by the government. Mm -hmm. So that's great. It's, this, this is what made us so big and strong. So Thailand is the number one player in the world. So obviously in the region, we are the best as well. But that's then again, we hear um, countries like Malaysia and perhaps India, which do have an advantage in terms of uh, lower cost. Has that make Thailand lose uh, any of its market share in the past? Or the trend, are we going to, uh, in the end, you know, coming down second or third, mm. you know, losing to countries yeah. like India and Malaysia? Um, let's say it will be a long way for Thailand to lose its leading position. At the moment, we, within tourism, we are estimating, because of lack of exact numbers, but we are estimating that medical tourism, meaning people who come for the purpose of treatments, um, are something like 10% of incoming tourism. So we are talking about roughly about one and a half to two million people coming for the purpose of receiving some kind of treatment or wellness. And this is, this is very far away from other destinations. Um, Malaysia and Singapore have been there first before Thailand, but they have not been promoted in such a way like Thailand. The government here is, is very aware of this potential and they are supporting it. Um, India is known to be very aggressive and, and, and very progressive in a way. The problem in India in comparison to Thailand or Malaysia or Singapore is that once you leave the hospital building, you are surrounded by hectic and by chaos and people who need recovery, mm -hmm. who need rehabilitation after, after invasive treatment, they need rest. They, it, it's too much for them. So it's calm and serenity. Exactly. The environment and this, is important. And this, and this is what we are, this is what we can offer here. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, India, through its marketing approach, is cheaper. I would say, without damaging anyone, that India today is the cheapest in providing treatments. Thailand has been the second so far um, in the way that they were a little bit more expensive 
but they, the quality they delivered was, was accepted well by the people and this is why the, the preference was given to Thailand over India so far. Now that Thailand has been in a leading position for quite a long time, um, I would say that the Thai are getting a little bit comfortable. Everyone is very busy and when you have a lot of demand economically the prices also go up. Mm -hmm. So it is whether the inflation in the country per se or whether it is the inflation of demand within the medical tourism sector. Um, prices have been going up in, in the last year or so and we are we are, of course, more expensive now than India. Mm -hmm. We are same prices at the moment like Malaysia and Singapore, and this is where we need to see how it will influence the decision-making of, of the customers when they start comparing. Mm -hmm. um, depends also on so-called repetition or follow-up treatments you will need to do. I would, I would say that Thailand, number-wise, Thailand is still leading and it will stay there for at least the next three, four years. And if the Thai authorities and the Thai medical management uh, are clever and they can plan ahead and so on, they can catch up with it now and keep the position. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are losing clients because, because administration, let's say, or bureaucracy here in answering to inquiries and establishing estimate proposals and so on has become very slow in Thailand, whereas in other countries very quick. And people who need treatment and would like to do, they would like to have quick answers. This was one of the strengths of Thailand at the beginning, mm -hmm. that we were very quick in answering, we were very good in the prizes, we gave excellent quality and people liked it. Now we should not lose this edge, this leading edge by becoming slow. I see. So it's going to be a big concern if we do not have this shake-up before we lose our I top spot? I would recommend it. I'm trying to, to bring it to the knowledge of the people. Um, owners here who are commercially thinking people sometimes look at it differently because it is more personnel, it is qualifying, it's training. And we are having a lot of rotation in this, in this market. All right, we'll now take a short break. Thailand Today will return right after these messages with more questions for Professor Lempert. Stay with us. Okay, thank you.